All right, so the next step is going to be gluing the pins in. So I just wanted to, I just wanted to show you the types of pins there are. These are the whale dent pins. Pindex short pins. As you can see, as you can see, these pins are long on one end, short on the other. These are the longer pins. And they are pretty much shaped the same way. The sleeves for the gray pans are these. As you can see, there's a little platform on one end, which are meant to be put on the surface side of the model. And these are the short, longer pins, the sleeves for the longer pins. And these have a little platform with another little cylinder sticking off of it and the shorter side of the cylinder goes toward the model. Now the pins that we're going to be using are the dual pins which are these. And as I said before, <clears throat> we put a little cut right on, right through the holes. And those are for these little tabs here. See those little tabs? When we put these in to the model, these little tabs sit down right into that cut. And that little cut prevents the pins from rotating. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to glue these dual pins into the model. So for that we can either use two different uh, cyano, cyanoacrylate glues or super glues and one is ultra gel. And the other one is also ultra gel, but one is more liquidy, which is this one, and one is thicker, which is this one. Now, whichever you want to use is up to you. I prefer to use the liquid because it tends to go into the holes a little better and it gets absorbed into the stone so you get a better hold. Now these glues you can uh, find at any uh, hardware store. I got mine from Lowe's so you can probably do the same thing. It's a little bit uh, more convenient since it has little tabs that you can squeeze to squeeze the glue out of it more um, predictably and to open it up first we kind of crank it down 
and that makes a hole through it you see before it was open and now it before it was closed and now it's open now we're gonna use this we're gonna use the little tabs and we're going to dispense some glue into the little well and then I like to always clean up the little nozzle with some paper towel this way when you try to open it next time it won't be all clogged up so now we're going to dip each one into the super glue and remember the short side is the lingual side So we're going to dip it in and then quickly push it down. Make sure you do it quickly so that it doesn't get stuck halfway because this uh, glue tends to sit set very quick. You see by now it's completely set and it's in there permanently. Now it will be very difficult to remove this. so. Do not glue it in until you're sure that each one of these pins fit into each of these holes. So before you put the glue in, double check, try it in, and just put it in. Remember not to put too much glue in because then it will creep up on the sides and you won't be able to see the sleeves. This was a little tough so because I didn't try it in. I wasn't sure. So make sure that as we take the uh, pins, we try it into the hole first. And if it's a little tough, then you can blow it out and make sure it's clean. Because most of the time, the reason these pins won't go down is because there's a little bit of dust in there. Make sure it's all the way down. You see? Everything is nicely seated to the bottom. The only way we can do that is if we make sure that the drill goes all the way down. You see this one is kind of tough to get in there so you can kind of clean it out with the pin itself. Just a little bit, a little drop. As we put it in, it will bond to the stone. The stone will actually absorb the glue and the glue will adhere to the pin. Make sure it goes all the way down. Another thing I want you to remember is not to forget to drill that hole for the pontic area. A lot of times we don't think of it as a tooth, so we skip putting a pin there and then we'll find out later that when we cut it, there's nothing to attach that to the base. As you can see that the uh, lingual pins are aligned to the cut marks. So where those red lines are, that's where our saw should be coming through.
Okay, now that all of our pins are glued down, we have to make sure there's no glue on the outside. As I mentioned before, don't overdo it with the glue because then it will squeeze out through the bottom and it will creep up on the pin and then when we take these sleeves we won't be able to see the sleeves all the way down. So after everything sets up, which takes about a couple of minutes, we can just put our sleeves on the model. You see some of these uh, sleeves are very close together so we must ensure that when we start sewing the dies out we have to be very patient and be mindful of the position of the saw so we follow the lines down right to where it's supposed to be. Now, as we notice the lines are parallel, so that's how we must cut the dies out, in a parallel fashion. Because at the end, we must be able to remove each die by itself, without having to remove their neighboring dies. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put separator on this and we're going to pour the base. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pour a base for our pin model. We're going to use a whale dent model base former and this gives us just the right height for our model not to be buried in the stone. We're going to apply separator but before we did we removed all the sleeves from the pins so that we do not put separator on these sleeves because the separator creates a little bit of space and also we want to make sure that these sleeves stay in the base. Don't be afraid to put separator all over the model because we don't want any stone during the mounting process to stick to it. So we wait a few seconds and then the next thing we're going to do is wash off this separator. This separator works very well and it leaves a very thin film so we're able to wash off the excess without washing off everything since it will get absorbed in the stone. After washing it off, we're going to air dry it. After we air dried it, we're going to put about 150 grams of model stone.
Let's make sure that this is zeroed out. Model stone is 30 milliliters per 100 grams, so we're going to use 45 milliliters of water. Now we're going to use the vibrator and we're going to pour the model into the base. After the bubbles came up, I'm going to put the sleeves back. Don't forget to put the sleeves back. It's very important. <clears throat> because if you just put it onto the stone, these pins may corrode a little bit and it will be very difficult for you to remove these pins from the stone without the sleeves. stone in there because once we put the model in there the stone is going to come up a little since the pins and the sleeves take up some space so we're going to use a, a low vibration and we're going to slowly place the model as it vibrates starting from the back down to the front After then we center it, so we should have a nice amount so we should have a nice amount of space between 
the stone model and the uh, base. So now we'll let it set for a little while. Okay, now this is set, so we will remove it from the base. And double check, make sure there's no bubbles. Then we're going to check to see if we went over the um, beveled areas. Okay, it looks like we did not. So what we're going to do is we're going to locate some of these pins here and uh, try to poke it out, see if we can remove this model. But before we do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to saw right in between here first so we can at least separate the two halves which will make it much easier to remove So here's our saw. If we look at the saw blade, we notice that the saw teeth are pointed towards the back. So when we're cutting, it's going to cut when we're pulling, not while we're pushing. Also, we can make a, a little putty pancake, and um, this is going to prevent us from cutting into the table. And it will also prevent uh, the sliding around of models, since this is like a flexible rubbery material. Uh, when we start cutting, we have to hold the saw in a flexible yet firm manner so we can feel which way we're cutting. Uh, when we are sawing we must not increase too much pressure. If we put too much pressure on the blade as you can see it's going to bend either this way or that way depending on how much pressure and which way we're pushing what we need to do is when we're sawing we need to just exert the pressure of the blade onto the model and this will prevent the bending of the blade which will cause us to make squiggly lines if we pull the blade and just put light pressure on it, we're going to move the blade in the direction we want. When we start cutting, if you notice, there is tissue which rises up above the marginal lines. So, if we start just cutting without any guidance, we may slip off these uh, tissue areas and cut the margin. So what I like to do is I like to use my fingernails as a guide, putting slight pressure 
towards my fingernail and that will prevent the saw blade from slipping this way. So now as we start cutting we must take a look at that line that we drew because that line is going to let us know how close we can get to that pin, that dowel pin. And we must pay attention not to the, just the labial but to the lingual line as well. So when we're cutting, have patience and we must exert light pressure so we can feel which way we're going with the saw blade. Now once we have a solid cut and we know that we're not going to hit the margin, we're going to stop and we're going to blow away all this dust and take a look which way we're going with the saw blade. So if we're off the line, we'll be able to notice right away. So the slight pressure again, I'm gonna blow on it, check to see if we're on the line. And keep going. Remember the lines should be parallel so that we can actually remove the dies independently from one another. When we reach the base, we must cut maybe another two millimeters into the base to make sure that we cut through the die. If we cut a little bit into the base, it won't matter. As we're cutting in, eventually we will notice a difference in sound from a sharp to a slightly dull. And this will signify that we're through the model. And then we stop sawing. We don't want to cut through the base. So now we move the saw blade back and forth and we remove it. Now we're going to clean up this model and we're going to try to remove this. Sometimes it can get stuck, so we try to remove it by pushing the pin on the bottom of the model. And you will feel a little bit of a give once it separates, which I did feel. And now we can remove this. So as we notice, this area is nice and smooth. And we have a little trough in the base and that trough along with the pins is going to prevent rotation. So now I'm going to try to remove the other side. We're going to push the pins on the bottom. These are going to be a little bit more difficult because there's so many of them. So we kind of see where they are and exert a little pressure on each one. And 
there we go. So this is what it should look like. Nice and flat and even. Now be very careful not to drop anything in those holes. And we're going to open up these holes on the bottom where the pins are so that if anything falls in there we can make sure we blow it out with either compressed air or steam. So we got one, two, three, four, five. So we got one more. And we can poke through there later and find the rest of the holes. So we can push that in. We can push that in. And the next uh, step is we're going to cut these dies out. This side, we don't need to cut. Okay, now that we removed the uh, model from the base. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to cut the dies out. The first cut we made was at the plaster bench where we cut it right in the middle. And as we can see, we cut it a little bit off the line. It should have been right on the red line. Um, sometimes it happens when your saw blades are not sharp. So you have to exert a little more force than what you want so that the uh, blade won't go exactly where you're planning it for it to go. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to change the saw blades. So we'll take a fresh saw blade. Pretty much all of these types of saws have the same way of changing the blade. Just basically unscrew the handle. And you can pop this blade out. As you can see, it has like a little cross pin that we need to hook into the little slots. And then we just tighten the blade again. <clears throat> So what we're going to do now, the other reason why we cut it in the middle, so that when we start sawing the dies out, the saw won't crash into the other side. So we're going to remove the other side and start sawing. Now we have a little bit more light, we have a new saw blade, so we just start following the line. Remember that since this, the base of the model, is inside the model base, we're going to have to saw a little bit past the Yellowstone. And again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take our fingernails and we're going to put it right up against the saw blade. Not the teeth, but just the spine. And then, slowly, we start sawing and checking, making sure that the blade is not hitting the margin. So slowly, 
we will follow the line. Remember, hold the saw gently, pull back and forth, and follow the line that you made. patience you have, the better your result will be. Okay, take out the blade, take out our first section. Remember, clean it up before we start sawing again. So we just blow it out. And then we start with the next one. If we notice that little tissue area here, which is higher than the margins, if we're not careful and saw exactly in the middle, the saw blade will either go on this side or it will go on this side and it will hit the margin and guess what you're gonna have to redo the model so again put the saw blade right in the middle and use your fingernails to align the saw blade put a little bit of pressure against your fingernails so that the saw blade doesn't slide to either side and it just stays in the middle so I'm gonna stabilize with this fingernail and the lingual side I'm gonna stabilize with my index fingernail so we're gonna start slowly remember don't put too much pressure just ooh, did you see that I didn't put enough pressure this way so it went over and it came by this way. If you put too much pressure on it, you will cut into it for sure. So again, we're gonna try. This time we'll be more careful. Okay, stabilize, pressure against the fingernails, drag the saw back and forth, slight pressure, clean it. You see the little saw line? It's starting to already wear in. So let's keep going. Patience. This is the most critical part. That was just a little bit of uh, the tissue flaking off. So Let's try again. Remember, slowly. This is the most critical part. Slight pressure against the fingernails and slight pressure downward. See, the line is getting deeper. Now they sell blades that are even thinner than this and with those you can get into like really tight spaces. The only difference is that when you have a thin blade like that it also deforms easily. So if you're not careful your line might be very uneven and squiggly. Okay, so now we're into the model. You see how it's exactly in between. So now we go down. 
try to follow our lines and if the blade goes off the line just stop the downward pressure and twist the saw so it goes back onto your lines remember your lines should be as parallel as possible getting down to the yellow so we're cutting a little more so we should be good now take it out and that's our second section we're almost on the line very close so we're gonna clean this up and we're going to start the next section now this is we only have to worry about the premolar but we still need to stabilize so that our line can be as close as possible to the premolar to preserve the pontic area We don't want to cut too much of the pontic area off. Just because you cleared the margin doesn't mean that you're home free. You have to keep sewing carefully and follow your lines. This one we're gonna have to watch for the uh, distal portion of this die. Use your fingernails, be patient. Now, if you want to make the stone softer, you can always uh, moisten it by running it under water and drying it so it's going to be easier to cut through but it will also make it weaker so you have to be careful with that I noticed that I went off killed a little bit on the lingual so what I'm going to do is I'm going to double check to make sure I'm headed in a relatively okay position and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this out and we're gonna see which way the lingual is going and as we can see we started going back in the right direction but initially we started going this way and if we kept going that way we would have cut into this die right there so we have to make sure we get back on that red line 
that's why it's important to always watch and and get back on track before it's too late We didn't cut all the way through. Sometimes when we have a little bit left, we don't have to cut all the way, but we can just snap it and it will separate. And then later, we're going to grind this little lip off so that it goes in easier. Okay, let's clean it up. this section back and got two more to go this is very close so we have to put both fingernails on Okay, we're through now. to change direction we ease off on the pressure but keep sawing and just keep moving your saw blade until you get to where you want to go double check the back make sure we're going in the right direction yellow and we're through let's get this out make sure you move your saw blade to get some of the dust out of the way so we don't break our tooth sometimes if you can't get it out you can always try to take the teeth out if not just keep clearing that area and then eventually you will get it some of the dust out and there we go it snapped so remember to take all these little flashes off so we're down to our last one this one will have to just bisect everything 
so if you see we have our holes there so we have to try to get <clears throat> right in between the two of them it's a little bit bigger gap but we still need to use our fingernails there still very close to the margins so we have to be super careful can take a knife or a burr we can take off some of this um, flash oh we went really close with this one take off some of the extra stone the flash on the bottom Later we're going to steam it and clean up the model. Some of them don't have a flash because we cut all the way through it. So you have to be extremely careful. If you're not careful, you're gonna hit the die, the die, uh, the dowel pins. Okay, let's put it back and see what we did. And blow some of the dust off.
and there we are. We're pretty much parallel because we tried to follow all the lines that we put on there. A couple of them may be a little bit off, but as long as you can uh, remove the dies, each one by itself, that's what we're looking for. And there's our die sectioning. In the next section we're going to trim the base, pin the base, and uh, pin the opposing model. And after that we're going to uh, articulate.